Welcome Cryptopians to Total Crypto Updates, bringing you another video for real deep dives into the crypto industry. I can't promise to only speak about crypto, but I can promise everything will be overstood. Let's dive into today's very dense crypto update. For today's video, we'll start off with price analysis to get the ideal trend of the market. Let's start with the total crypto market cap. As you can see on the charts, the market cap is having a strong resistance to the $1 trillion mark. This has been going on for the last month and a half, maybe a little more. Running off the support from $800 billion to $850 billion mark, which has been a strong support for about the last month and a half also. Stating this, I should also explain that a few months ago, we did hit a recent market bottom of about $700 billion to $750 billion. After hitting that recent market bottom, the market cap did pump up to $1.16 trillion. So even though we are pumping right now on the charge, the crypto total market cap is still making lower lows and lower highs. With concluding this analysis, you consider this a strong downtrend. However, with the sudden halt to innovation in the crypto market, we consider this price action still pretty good and in a consolidation period. Moving on to the Bitcoin chart. As you can see, Bitcoin has also been consolidating between $25,000 and $18,000. According to our analysis, which we always recommend you figure out your own pattern to your own type of analysis that works for you. Resistance has been there for the last few months, so has the support, and Bitcoin has been consolidating right in the middle in the downtrend, even though it did pump to $25,000. The last couple months has been making lower highs and lower lows until this past week, where we finally broke the trend to create a higher high. And the best part about this higher high is that we didn't get a bear's wick on the top and then a shitcoin drop right after. Which is what Bitcoin has been doing, it's been pumping and then shitcoin dropping. Here, it did pump to 21,000 and start consolidating in the area between 21 and 20,000. We are not saying that Bitcoin won't fall further or that it will rise. We are only stating the obvious on what's going on in the charts. Remember, if you ever get confused on the macro trend aspect of anything with candlestick charts, whether it's stock, crypto, ETFs, you can always zoom out and catch a macro trend. The teal line on the chart that we have drawn is just a micro trend line which we usually use to trade with when trading short time frames. Zooming out on the Bitcoin chart, and I don't want to get too deep into it, but with our analysis you can also see another full scale macro support line. Our team drew this line a few months ago when Bitcoin was around $30,000. We have been using it as a sort of price prediction. This price prediction came to us when there was a lot of market uncertainty and all we did was follow a straight path of closed market bottom candles. As we all know everybody in crypto, well mostly everybody in crypto were screaming Bitcoin to $8,000. Even though it's not out of the question, I'm still a know the worst that could happen but hope for the best type of person. With that being said, moving on to the DXY. As we all know that the DXY has been pumping like there is no tomorrow like it's the last pump it will ever have. Up until about a month ago, where we had a strong resistance for the first time in a couple months. The DXY has bounced off of the strong resistance three times so far. With that being said, it still hasn't fell past the angled trend support line or the purple line, which it has been following for about a year now. If we zoom out, you can see that the red line is a trend line of all the market highs for the past few years, and the upper purple line is equivalent to the most recent market highs. The blue line is an angled trend resistance line that the DXY has been following for the past year also. With that being said, when all three lines met, we predicted a high chance of resistance, and that's exactly what we got. Again, most of these lines we use for trading purposes in our own recipe for trading lower time frames than a day. We do not recommend you take anything we say and implement it into your trading strategy without understanding exactly how and why we do what we do. What you're seeing right now, it's just a small portion of our strategy. Moving on. Ethereum on the other hand, where it's still in a downtrend on the macro side. Also on the recent chart side, it's been between the support of $1,000 and a resistance of $2,000. I wouldn't really call this consolidation, it's more of a perfect sideways motion. 
only because Ethereum has just about the same chart-to-price action as Bitcoin, but with a more gradual break towards a breakout motion up. I'm not stating that Ethereum will be breaking out anytime soon, but if you look at the uptrends on smaller time frames, they can look like breakout patterns. And in my honest opinion, which I would never state, and I hope you guys do not take it into consideration, it is just my opinion. I feel like the stunt in crypto's innovation that's going on around the market is the only thing holding Ethereum back. Also, I am not a fan of Ethereum, nor am I saying Ethereum is the only one that looks like it's going to break out, even though it does. I just see more of a, I don't want to go down motion in the charts. I really can't go too deep into it because, if you zoom out on the macro aspect, it's still a long ways away from where it was and still in a macro downtrend. XRP's chart shows that even though it's been falling to lower lows every month for the past year, it is still not well past its previous higher low. Going to the daily time frame, XRP has finally surpassed the 200 EMA. I would like to say that this is because of all the BS information with the SEC case and Ripple. But honestly, this happened before any of the news was even released or thought about. Still, without falling past 40 cents, XRP has been moving sideways between 40 cents and 60 cents. Now on to crypto bubbles. The bubbles are showing a lot of green with Bitcoin up 38.95%, BNB of 4.91%, USDT to 6.84%, as crazy as that sounds for a stablecoin. Ethereum up 19%, Solana, ADA, and Dogecoin almost up 2% and quant down 3.5 for the week on a market cap plus dominant scale. On Coinbase Around the Block podcast, Armstrong states that the market capitalization of Bitcoin is not yet substantial enough for BTC to act as a real flight to safety asset, as some of Bitcoin's advocates have been forecasting. Armstrong believes that during the next 10 years, Bitcoin will be able to successfully assume the role of a new gold asset class. Typically in down macro environments, we see there's a flight to safety. In the traditional economy, that was always gold, commodities, things like that. But I think what we've realized in this downturn is that the crypto economy is just not a significant enough percentage of the global economy, the broader economy yet, to be actually treated as that digital gold in the sense that people do a flight to safety towards Bitcoin. I think we'll see that probably change over time. I could see in the next 5 or 10 years as the crypto economy really becomes a bigger percentage of the global GDP that people will actually flee to Bitcoin as the sort of new gold, if you will, but that hasn't happened yet. Frankly, I'll admit, I overestimated the chances that Bitcoin would be this inflation hedge in this macro environment. I thought it might actually draw more attention to Bitcoin in this kind of environment, but it looks like we're a little too early. It's such a good reminder that, even 10 years ago when I started Coinbase, I thought it was super early. But even now today, it's still super early. It's going to take decades for the global macro environment to start to think about the crypto economy as the main thing, and we saw something similar happen with e-commerce back 20 years ago when it first started in 1999 to 2000. People treated it as this sideshow. They would say, ah, uh, I'd never put my credit card into a website. It might get stolen or something. And here we are 20 years later and e-commerce is 15 to 20% of global GDP. So I think the crypto economy will follow a similar trajectory. It just means we probably have another 5 or 10 years to go. Here is a small portion of the video. I will be leaving the link in the description below. People, people have tried it in various ways. We're trying it in various ways. Um, the other things, I guess two other things I think that could really kick off the next upcycle, we talked about a little bit already. One was scalability of the blockchains, right? Like if ETH lands the surge or one of the next upgrades, um, that could be a really big open, uh, you know, catalyst. And then I think regulatory clarity still. I mean, when I talk to these institutions, just circling back to the beginning of my answer, um, the biggest thing they say is if you get regulatory clarity, they'll they'll move in a big chunk of their portfolio. So there's a couple of bills going through Congress in the U.S. You know, the Stab Now Bozeman bill is, is promising and it's got bipartisan support. So we think it, it'll probably go through next year is our guess. Um, you know, frankly, the um, the chilling effect that Gensler's had on the industry in the U.S. is quite frustrating. I think we're seeing some asset issuers in the U.S. 
um, basically say they don't want to launch in the U.S. on any kind of U.S. exchange because they, they're afraid of kind of um, the legal burden of the SEC kind of pressure on them, even if they've done the, the legal analysis to believe that they're not a security. So that that's frustrating. I think it's harmful to the U.S. Um, and, you know, but if we can kind of get some of that regulatory clarity, I think that that, you know, negative pressure goes away and that would really help the next up cycle as well. That will conclude today's update on trending news in the crypto world. Thank you for watching if you made it all the way through. Stay tuned. We are an active admin. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Never be afraid to voice your opinion. Tell us in the comments what you think and give us some suggestions on what kind of content you'd like us to deep dive into. Until next time, good day, good night, and goodbye.